Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Farming Simulator 2015, or 15 actually, as it's officially called. I always say 2015, because whatever. I don't think this is the 15th iteration of Farming Simulator. Um, I'm Bradham73, <laughs> thank you uh, for stopping by and uh, watching yet another episode as we plow forward, no pun intended. Uh, do you see what I did there? And uh, try to make more money. Uh, we're at 108,000. Um, we have all of the combining done. And I'm going to slightly accelerate time. And the reason why is I'm going to run over here. And uh, we're going to... See, is he empty? Yes, he is. All right. So I'm just going to have this dude drive the course so that he can get on to unloading. Ah, well, I didn't want that. <laughs> He's going to get to uh, continuing to unload this uh, silage over here as we pour more grass into this uh, bunker. So uh, it's kind of had a nice surprise today. Uh, my month seven for my Millennium Falcon build came in today. So that was pretty cool. So if you guys want to watch me building and painting and all that good stuff, and basically a replica of the original shooting miniature, which it's not really that small. It's pretty freaking big. Uh, when it's done, it's going to be like 32 inches long, like 22 or 24 inches wide. Um, it's going to weigh like 25 pounds. But, um, yeah, I just got my seventh month in. S month seven out of 25 more months. So we're not even halfway done with this thing yet. And it's just going to be a monster. Uh, so anyway, that came in today. So I was uh, doing some filming uh, and some assembly of the first issue. And um, I actually have a lot more issues. I think I have, like, all, month, all of month six to post. Um, there will be issue 21, which will post right before... Uh, this episode, and um, I'm trying to think, uh, yeah, so I'm going to try to get all of last month's issues posted on YouTube uh, in the next week or so. That way I can get completely caught up with all of the, you know, the video play, and, um, you know, so I don't have to worry about it anymore, basically. Um, all right, so I am going to, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Okay, let's just drive at the nearest waypoint. Um, that's the one I wanted, right? Meow. <clears throat> right, we still need to get some more... Uh, mixed ration for the cows. Uh, cows productivity should be at 100%. And uh, we're going to come over here. We're going to pick up some more bales. If I don't get stuck in the little cutter upper thing. Okay. So, as promised, I am... Uh, working on the cows. Oh, come on. Just go in there. Oh, my God. So, apparently, some people uh, were mad at me after my construction simulator game because I didn't really refresh, in, refresh up on um, the... Oh, what is it? The, uh... The big, uh... Hole driller thing. And the thing is a pain in the... I'm just going to say it. It is a pain in the ass. <clears throat> both literally and figuratively. To operate that thing. It doesn't matter if you're on the controller. It doesn't matter if you're on the keyboard and mouse. The controls 
are very complicated and a little bit confusing. Um, as far as the big, you know, the big trailer that's supposed to go with it, I will apologize in my next episode because I didn't realize that there was actually a tutorial on how that thing works, and I didn't uh, look at it until later uh, when somebody actually said, you know, will you do the tutorial? And I'm like, there's a tutorial? Sure enough, there is. So in my next episode of Construction Simulator, um, I will be doing that. Um, some guy <laughs> basically called me some names and said he was unsubbing. But, um, you know, if, if he's going to unsub over something like that, then... Uh, what can you do? Those are the people that you're never going to make happy, I think. <laughs> so if he's if if you know who you are that said that you're you're uh, listening right now, I'm really sorry, but you know sometimes the truth hurts. Um. So we are still continuing. Oh, I should drive the. Yeah, why don't I do that? Why don't I drive? This guy over to field 41. In the meantime, I will get that course set up. We're going to take a shortcut over the silage pit here. Right on, okay. Um, oh, I beat uh, Mad Max on PC uh, yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. Um, and I actually played it today to kind of try to finish out a lot of the little um, extra side missions and things like that. Oh, gosh. Oh gosh, we're in trouble. And oh no. Oh no, I'm screwed. I'm screwed. I think. Um Uh I, <laughs> I guess I'm gonna have to come back and pick that up. Uh, okay. Um so yeah, I, I actually beat it. Um, very enjoyable game. Um, it's I think it's worth the money. It, you know, you'll beat it pretty quick. It's kind of like Assassin's Creed, except you know with driving cars instead of parkour. But I really enjoyed it. I, I've always wanted to kind of know more about you know the world of Mad Max, and uh, because you know you never really get an idea of what occurred between. Mad Max 1, where the world was pretty much going to hell in a handbasket anyway, and Mad Max 2, other, otherwise known as the Road Warrior here in the United States. Um, and, you know, obviously there's some type of a war, and it's I just don't think it's ever really made clear exactly what happens. And, um, you know, by the end of Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, where they actually, I think, <clears throat> you know, they take off in this little plane, and there's all these kids in this plane, and they, I think they actually get to Sydney, Australia. The movie does take place in Australia, because it's very difficult to see, but I'm pretty sure you can see them, like, flying over Sid Sydney Harbor, uh, and then, you know, through the dust storms, you can see uh, uh, the Opera House and some of the other landmarks around there, so then you kind of realize, you know there's no more world left and you know a, a lot of the kids that grow up today um, don't really understand the the constant threat that the world um, lived with uh, because of uh, the Cold War and the con you know the constant threat that the United States and Russia were basically going to nuke each other now I kind of always had this feeling that, you know, cooler heads would prevail, and luckily they did. But, um, you know, there was always this kind of foreboding 
that that those types of things would or could happen. And uh, you know what's kind of funny is, you know, if if a war did break out between like the United States, China, and Russia, um, and we all decided to nuke each other, you know, why would we just like? Why does the rest of the world get to get nuked too? Like I, I've always always understood that like basically both sides have nuclear missiles essentially aimed everywhere so if if it's it's like if it, if one country goes we all go and that's what's called you know ner- uh, mutually dis- uh what is it mutually assured destruction and that's that's essentially if one fi- one side fires first the other side retaliates with everything they have and basically the two countries end th- the world forever uh, or at least as we know it and plunges us back in, you know, <laughs> plunges us back to caveman days, unfortunately. Um, but, uh, you know, it was really something that, you know, in the back of your mind, um, I thought about as a kid, you know, sitting at school, you know, is, you know, sometime, is there going to be just a flash of light and we're all going to be gone? You know, we just had no idea. And so, you know, as you grow older and older, and especially when you watch movies like Mad Max or there's this old game with, or this game, this old uh, movie with Matthew Broderick called War Games. That's kind of where I was getting with that uh, whole game thing. It's called War Games. It's actually a really good movie. Uh, it stars Matthew Broderick, and I can't remember the girl he's running around with in that movie. But it was back when he was a kid. I think it was even before Ferris Bueller's Day Off, if I'm not mistaken. Um where uh, he basically hacks into a government computer and almost starts World War III, nuclear war, um, by by challenging a government computer that essentially controls all of you know the United States nuclear weapons to a war game, where you know. <laughs> But he, he doesn't really realize that, and the computer doesn't realize that it's just a game, or that the kid thinks it's a game. So, um, really good movie. It used to be on Netflix. I don't think that it is anymore, though. Um, but uh, if you ever get a chance to watch it, it's a really good 80s movie, and it's got a feel good ending, um, which is cool. Um, there, another, another movie, I think it was called. The Phil- I think it's either called The Manhattan Project or The Philadelphia Experiment. I know that there are movies with both of those titles. Um, it's about a kid who... <laughs> this is another 80s movie. I mean, this is just how 80s movies were back in the day. It was about a kid who breaks into like a... a like a uh, uranium processing lab... And steals some uranium so that he can build his own nuclear bomb, just just because he wants to do it. Just because he's like, hey, I think it would be really cool to build a nuclear bomb. And um, you know, in in this day and age, if you know, and of course, at the end of the movie, they're like, you know, you just build a nuclear bomb. And then of course, well, you'd have to see what happens. But then there's like this aw shucks, you know, happy ending, and everything's okay. Um, but uh, you know that that was kind of the feeling back in the '80s, and you know I I look at some of the movies that come out today. Like there's some I think there was like this Disney movie called like I, now I'm not in any way gonna ever watch this movie, but I saw a poster for a movie, and I like I said I think it was a Disney movie called like a teen beach movie or something like that. I, I don't. I so I put it out of my mind that quickly, and I'm just looking at the poster for this movie and thinking to myself, "Is this the crap that kids are growing up on these days?" And it really makes me feel bad because it's just. It looks so. I don't know. Maybe I'm just out of touch with the way kids are these days, and I, and I'm fine with that. But boy, if I had a movie like that, that I don't know. I just would have been beside myself with shame if that's the kind of movies that came out in the 80s because we had some pretty freaking cool movies that came out in the 80s i'm just gonna say that 
Um, we had Star Wars. We had we had Tron, the original Tron. We had um, the Last Starfighter, which is like one of the best. That's still one of my f- most favorite movies of all time. It's called The Last Starfighter. It was literally one of the first movies besides Tron to use um, CG, computer graphics effects, for basically all the spaceship combat scenes. And if you watch it now, it's bas- it's kind of funny because all of those scenes are like, wow, that looks exactly like a video game. And, and ba- even back then, it was, you know, we still s- felt the same way. You know, it looked like a video game. Um, but there, there was also something fun about the story. I still like the story to this day. Um, and it's just really, uh, it's, it, again, it's like one of those feel good movies and it's, you just don't get stuff like that anymore. Or it's, it's dumbed down and it's, you know, polished over or, or it's a rehash. It's like everybody's remaking Every you know all these movies, and we got Ghostbusters, but now with women this time, um, you know it's like why can't you leave these franchises alone? Like, can't people come up with an original idea anymore, other than to like reboot an old movie? I mean, I can understand some movies getting rebooted, but Ghostbusters, I guess I want to have to see how they how how they do it and how it turns out. But I'm just seeing this new. Ghostbusters is being an absolute disaster at the box office. It, it looks horrible, like from what I've seen of it so far. And I don't really think the cast is that great. I mean, there's a few people in it that might be good, but, you know, there's a couple cameo appearances from a few of the original actors, but they're not even playing themselves. They're playing like these, ca- you know, cab drivers and stuff that are just not even, I don't know, just really disappointed. Um,. I would still like to see uh, a sequel to Prometheus, um, which was, you know, the Aliens, Aliens prequel, sequel, whatever the heck it was. Um, I actually liked Prometheus. There's a lot of people out there that um, really didn't like Prometheus. I actually thought it was pretty cool. It wasn't perfect, but I enjoyed it um, to the point where I brought, you know, bought it on Blu-ray. I, I watched it like at least three, maybe four times. I, Three, I'll say three times for sure. Um, I thought it was a good movie. You know, I I enjoy it. I like that kind of science fiction stuff. Um, science fiction is de- especially like high science fiction like that is definitely my favorite genre. Stuff like, well, per, you know, Aliens, Prometheus, um, things like Star Trek, Star Wars, um, you know, Last Starfighter, like I mentioned before. Um, I mean, you know, Battle Beyond the Stars, which is another 80s movie that it's today it's like cheesy as crap, but back then it was it was awesome. Um I mean, there's just so many you know, science fiction movies that are just awesome and and then there's, you know, there's a lot of science fiction that's just not really it's just mediocre. Um and I'm going to call some people out not really call anybody out, but you know, I'm probably going to lose like 10% of my subscribers. Um, if you guys are old enough to remember Babylon five, it was a science fiction TV series. I think back in the nineties, maybe to early two thousands. I can't really remember. I never watched it because kind of like the last Starfighter and it's computer graphics, um, you know, spaceships, the the computer graphics that they were using in Babylon 5 didn't work. Um, and I, I found all of the designs of all their ships and all the technologies to be just uninspiring. And th- this is my opinion. I know that people are going to, you know, have different opinions, and that's fine. Um, but I it just never resonated. It never hit that nerve that shows like Star Trek did or um, really any Star Trek series. I think all the Star Trek series, even at its worst, was better than Babylon 5 at its best. Um, And there's going to be people out there that are be like, you're absolutely wrong. But hey, there's people out there that absolutely love Sequest. So, you know, go figure. 
Um, Stargate SG-1, another example of a series that just... It had really good sci-fi elements, but I just don't think... Um, you know, they, they they jumped the shark so many times. Like, the original series I thought was, was pretty good. Um, when they started branching off into, like, these... You know, there was, like, Stargate Atlantis. It's like, come on, give me a break. Like, it, it, it's gone... Now, I know science fiction isn't going to be, quote-unquote, believable. But when you get into, like, absolutely corny, of course... You know, you might say, well, Brad, you know, the Egyptians with spaceships is pretty corny, too. Yeah, I know. I get it. I, I do. I do get it. <laughs> I absolutely do, now that you mention it. Um, oh, we have to un unfill? Did I just say unfill? I did. I said unfill. We have to unload the grass unfill Ugh. I'm so ashamed oh we're up to 211 almost 212,000 euros that is looking good um trying to think of some other science fiction stuff that that I I liked um you know growing up well, of course, there was stuff like, um, like, like cartoon-wise, like Star Blazers. Um, if you've never heard of Star Blazers, um, it, I really enjoyed it as a kid. I don't really, ow, my butt. Sorry about that. My wallet, the corner of my wallet was like poking my butt cheek. Don't ask how. Just don't ask. I said, don't ask. Okay, you, that you're typing in the comment section. Stop typing. Because I'm not going to tell you. Um, <laughs> you know who you are. Uh, no, but Star Blazers, stuff like Robotech. I really enjoyed those cartoons growing up. G.I. Joe, of course. Um, I don't even think they have G.I. Joe on. Well, they don't even have, like, afternoon cartoons. Like, like when I was a kid, like, we got off the bus about 3.30. And afternoon cartoons started... At like, and it was like on all the major channels. You had it on like ABC, NBC, what is now Fox, um, CBS. They all had their like afternoon cartoon shows. And, you know, they would start about 3 o'clock in the afternoon and they had to go till about 5 o'clock and then the 5 o'clock news came on. And the, that just does not exist today in any capacity. There's no. Not that I know of, at least, unless there's something on, like, Nickelodeon or something. In which case, it's probably something really horribly cheesy. We had the awesomest TV entertainment, I think, back when we were when I was a kid. It, it just doesn't exist today, and it's, it's a shame. Um, because I think the kids today are, well, you know, media's changed a lot, too. You know, everybody's doing stuff on the Internet, and... It's it's a it's an entirely different world as far as the media goes, but at the same time, I think you know when you get away from dramatic television, um, and and I say like like shows like I'm trying to think of something that's on right now, like person of persons of interest or whatever it's called. I actually just started watching that on um, on Netflix, which I thought's pretty cool. But but shows like Lost or Oh, I can't like even like Law and Order stuff like that. Things that are are cerebral and make you think. Um, but like Lost was like really entertaining, and and there was a lot of science fiction stuff in it that really got you thinking about just questions about life or or whatever. Um, you know, you don't really see that kind of stuff made for kids anymore. At least I don't. And if they're if there are things like that out there, then I just, I'm not aware of it now. And I'm not saying I'm like going to go and watch it, but I'm just kind of trying to compare my childhood to that of, you know, kids today, or at least maybe how I perceive, you know, the, the childhood or the childhoods of, you know, kids that are growing up, you know, today. 
because it just seems like things are so much different. Um, there's a lot more access to information. Um, some of the information is good. Some of the information is absolutely horrible. Um, you know, there, there are websites that kids have access to that, um, they really shouldn't in any capacity. Um, and, and I, you know, I, in a way I'm a believer of the first amendment, uh, you know, freedom of speech and freedom of the press and those types of things. But at the same time, I think that we've used the we've abused that First Amendment um, to you know pe- you know people are claiming certain things are art which definitely are not art and um, you know certain things can harm people irreparably uh, and I'm not going to really say any names but you know there are definitely websites out there that that cater to that kind of content. And which is a shame because I think kids these days grow up way faster than than they really should because that type of information uh, is available. Uh, but I don't know. Again, that's just my opinion. All these kids are like, "No, screw you, Brad. We're growing up just fine." Ha! Huh? <laughs> and I thought the same thing when I was, you know, a kid too. Um, you know, discovering life and all different types of things. Um, good and bad, you know, I, I, I just thought, heck, that's just the way it is. Um, so I don't know, maybe, maybe I have a, a more conservative, um, opinion now that I'm older. Cause, cause now, you know, I, I can look back and I could say, man, if I would have done this different, or if I wouldn't have known about that, um, so that, you know, if I wouldn't have known to do that, then I wouldn't have done this to get me into trouble doing that. You know, this, that's just kind of a generic uh, example, but, you know, just something <laughs> that is a, actually ex- an example. Um, let's see. I cannot believe that this cow pen is still not filled. How much do we have? 94,000 mixed ration. Man, and it's still not full. Maybe we need to, I don't know. Okay, the T8 needs to be unloaded. Where is the T8? I want to know where the T1000 is. Because it's the next skeleton. You know, we had original movies like The Terminator back in the 80s. And all they can think to do today is reboot The Terminator, which essentially is what happened this this year, which is so embarrassing. I don't even know what to say. Um... I don't know. I'm just, I'm beside myself with, I don't know. At least we got a new Mad Max this year. And, um, wow, I really got off on a tangent talking about, and it all started with Mad Max. See, I'm bringing it full circle. I had this whole thing planned out. You thought, you guys thought I was rambling on, but no, I was talking in, in a directed order towards this exact place and time. Now, what was I talking about again? No, I'm just kidding. Um, no, but, you know, we did get a new Mad Max this year. It was actually, uh, I think it was written and directed by the guy who did the originals. And, um, I've heard it's totally awesome. So, uh, I still haven't seen it. I need to go and pick it up on Blu-ray. I keep telling myself, like, every week, I'm going to go get Mad Max on Blu-ray, and I never do. Um, let's see, 74%. Wow, 250,000 euros. Did I forget to... I forgot to use the rake, didn't I? I think I did. That's why I'm getting all these corners. Because I didn't rake the grass with the rake. Oh well, not a big deal. Um... Let's see, what else can we do this episode? I hadn't really planned on doing too much um, because I wanted to... Let's see, what did I want to do? I wanted to fast forward time to get a great demand, maybe sell off one of one of our crops to get some more money. 
But I don't know. Because we need, we need to do some other things too. Like this. This is what we're going to do this episode. Um, <clears throat> let's run over and uh, get the, uh, the combine over here. You know, I still haven't heard really any additional word on uh, Farming Simulator Gold Edition, whatever the update's going to be. I definitely thought that we would have... Oh, great demand for corn. Yay! <gasps> Ooh, and we have a ton of corn, don't we? Great demand for corn. Okay, at the freight yard. Where's the freight yard? Corn. Um, freight yard, where are you? Okay, down there. All right. First thing we need to do is start getting in our trucks. There we go. We are going to have to put in course play. <gasps> oh, man. Um, all right. Grain to freight yard. Bam. Wheat, and we gotta change that to corn. And hopefully. Not exactly sure what's going on here. There he goes. So we're just gonna have to get all of our trucks. We gotta get these guys out of the way too, don't we? Dun, dun, dun. How is he in traffic? Who's in traffic? Oh, he's not anymore. All right. Uh, green to freight yard. Oh, it goes this way, huh? Oh, right, right, okay. All right, so hopefully we're not going to get any... Uh... Gosh, we got a lot of corn, don't we? Yeah, look at that. We're probably going to have quite a lot of money... Uh, when we get done with this, uh, let's see. Green, keep going past it. Green to freight yard. Corn and drive court. Wait, nearest waypoint, yes. Okay, right. Okay, we need to get some of the bigger tractors. Where is my. Where's my red case tractor? Okay, so this guy... You know, we could even use this guy to, del to deliver corn. Now, as far as where this forage wagon... What does this forage wagon hold, by the way? Let's look here. Oh, no, that one won't. That one won't. Never mind. <clears throat> now, okay, we don't have a loan. All right. Okay. Since we are finished with grass for right now, I am going to take this up up to the top farm so that we can start um, 
if I can put this this tractor, this T8, on uh, you know trailer duty, we'll we'll get a trailer, get him hauling as well. Because the more you know, the quicker we can get that done, and we just don't have to worry about it anymore. Gonna sell a lot of corn though. Oh gosh, I don't know if that's our first or second truck. Might be our first one because we still. I don't think we've had a drop off yet. Okay, there's a, there's a truck. Coming nice and slow down the hill, so that they don't wreck, which is good. There's truck number three. Okay. I thought that they would wouldn't. I thought they would be a little further apart than that, but maybe not. Okay, where are? Let's disconnect the. Well. I picked the worst position to disconnect that in. Man, that guy's dirty. Okay, so let's drain the freight yard. Corn drive course. This tractor I can take over and uh, you know wash this one. I think we've got quite a bunch of equipment to wash. Um, we'll put him on the same course too. We're just going to put as many tractors on the course as possible. No course loaded. Rain to freight yard. Okay, and... Drive course. No, 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 no. Uh. You know what? Oh, crap. We can't do this. We can't do it with these tractors because they're not going to be in the right position. Crap in a handbag. Uh. Nope. Not going to work. Crap. Okay. Oh well. Holy crap, we have 300,000. Okay, so we're getting basically 20,000 per. Oh, look, we got our first truck back. Well, that, he got back quick. Um, okay, so they've all dropped off. Let's, uh, hello. I want to run down. Uh, what does it say? Send off train. Gosh, how much money are we going to get? Will we get a million dollars? I think we'll I think we'll hit over six hundred thousand for sure. Well, maybe not. Maybe five hundred thousand for sure. <laughs> but we'll see how much money we get here. Drum roll. So we got three hundred thirty-eight, three hundred thirty-nine. Come on. 
50, another 54,000. Wow, that wasn't as much as I thought it'd be. Okay, whatevs. So for, well, we, I think we'll get up to 600,000 for sure. Okay, um, what am I doing? I need to jump in here. Where is he at? Oh, I know what I can do. Whoops. There. You, I need you to go down to the somewhere. Needs to go down to the biogas and pick up the forge wagon because we need, well, actually there's another forge wagon down there. I need to put hay in it. That's what I need to do. So that's what we're going to do. No. Straw. Got to put in straw. <laughs> Actually, I don't need to go down to the... Um, I don't need to go to where I thought I needed to go. I need to go to where the cows are because that's where the forge wagon that I want to use is. Yeah. Man, look at all these fields that we are need to reseed. Man, it's going to take forever. Watch out. Gosh, I swear, these other cars, they have no... You know, they see me coming. They're just like... You know, business as usual. Look, here comes Brad. Let's just run him over. It's just the way... Yeah, it's, it's tough being me, guys. It's just tough. <laughs> it's so tough. Meow. Uh. Okay. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Wait, wait, wait. Might as well empty out as much as we possibly can. It's just less that we're going to have to haul back up here. Wow. We were lower on hay than I thought we would be. Hmm, the plot thickens. And let me check my time here. <gasps> Crap, you know what? Did I not start my time? Oh my god, I'm such a moron. Alright. Um... <laughs> I'm going to check my time. Alright, 43 minutes. Um, <laughs> so at least we have a little bit of time. We don't have much, but we've got a little bit. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, as I was saying before, I haven't heard anything about Farming Sim, Gold Edition, the expansions, nothing. I thought, I mean, I really did think that there would be an announcement by now. Um, and I don't know why there hasn't been. In, unless it really is, you know, isn't going to come out until Christmas. I mean, I guess it's possible that they could be behind on it, but that would be kind of unusual for Giants. You know, just given how the release schedule has always been, that, you know, they've always kept the game simple enough that they could always meet their goals. So I don't know. We'll have to just keep our fingers crossed, I guess, and see what happens. Because I'm, I'm still seeing a lot of dates that say, you know, uh, October 30th or 31st, something like that. And then I'm still, and then I'm also seeing dates that are like um, December 30th or 31st. So, which that's like a really weird date to come out with the game. Just saying. Unless you're in like financial, pro you know, trouble. And you're releasing a, a game or releasing a product in order to take advantage of the changeover in the year due to, you know, tax reasons. That's the only thing I can think of. All right, so we are approaching 500,000. Well, how much did we have at the beginning? 110, 120,000? Something like that. So not bad.
So, yeah, I mean, I, I really wish I knew more. Um, there wasn't really that much news that came out about it at, at uh, Gamescom, though, in Germany. I, th- I thought we would hear way more information about it than we did. It was just kind of disappointing this year. I guess if you're German, you know, if, if you're from Germany, you might know. Because all the news about it's been in German. Um, but uh, aside from that, I haven't really heard anything. So if you are a German and you have heard news or you want to research it for me, get in touch with me. I'd love to read some translations of, you know, when stuff's supposed to be coming. Seventy percent. I don't think we'll be able to do this whole line of uh, straw here. I might have been saying hey again. Ugh. I'm so, I'm so sad. All right, off we go. Back down to the other farm. Back down to the cows. 500,000, guys. How much... Uh, how much do we have? We still have quite a. We still have two hundred thousand corn. That's at least, you know, a couple more truckloads worth. Hopefully, I can get it done before the end of the episode. I think. I think we will, but who knows? <gasps> oh gosh. So I'm, I'm going to come down. We're going to. Um, You know, we're going to drop off as much straw as we can. And then, you know, if, if whatever we drop off tops off the cows, then we're going to come back up and uh, pick up some more. Well, we, we'll, we'll come back up and pick up some more anyway, because I know, I know that uh, we're going to need to. I'm really surprised at how fast this thing picks up the corn, though. Or the straw. The corn. <laughs> Can you imagine, like, how much of a pain in the butt it would be if, if like, farmers had to, like, vacuum up the corn off the ground for some reason? Gosh. Like, all the little corn kernels. <laughs> I mean, it seems ridiculously silly, but, I mean, could you just imagine if we had to go through something that horribly boring, I guess. Oh, there we go. So yeah, we'll we're gonna go back up. Was that really all the straw we needed? Yep, maximum capacity. So what do we have in there? Only 30,000. Okay. All right. That's cool. So let's go back up to the top of the field and pick up the, you know, pick up some more straw. You guys are like, why are you taking a full wagon? Well, it's only 90% full. I just want to have it in reserve topped off down at the bottom of the field so that, um, you know, so that, uh, well, We'll have it for when we need it, obviously. Duh. <laughs> Uh-oh, I see a CP going down the map. Uh, looks like they're all on the way. We see the one here, the one here, the one here. Whoops.
Now, I've often thought about buying another forage wagon just for straw for the cows, but then I keep going, I don't know, I keep going back and forth on whether or not I really want to to go that route. I don't know. People of you know, people keep asking me like, well, how you know, when are you going to stop? And I was thinking episode 100, and then with farming some gold, who knows what's going to happen then? Um, <clears throat> I don't know. We're just going to have to wait and see what happens. Um, don't forget, guys. You can actually. Um, I have all my episodes in a playlist, so you know if you're just joining in in this episode, you can always go back and start. You know, start the playlist from episode one, or you know any of my other uh, no, <laughs> any of my other series too. Um, you know, I, oh my gosh, I try to do playlists for every single series that I have, so uh, you know so that you can watch them consecutively, uh, back to back. So you know when you get done with issue or you know episode one, it goes to episode two. And two to three, you know, automatically, so you don't have to like search through all my videos to do that. Um, so just remind, you know, as a reminder, you can always do that. So if you're sitting, sitting there doing homework, and you just kind of want to listen to me playing Farming Simulator, you know, kind of like a radio show, right? Um, it's like talk radio. <laughs> I'm gonna have to have callers call in and talk about ghosts and aliens. <laughs> and then I can tell my Bigfoot story and the time I was abducted by alien. No, I'm just kidding. Well, no, I'm actually not kidding about the big Bo Bigfoot story. Um, you'll have to go back through. I've told the I've told the story. I'm pretty sure I've told the story in the uh, farming simulator series so you have to go back and figure out which episode it was that i told the bigfoot story because it's pretty creepy i'm just gonna say it I, to this day even thinking about it, it sends shivers up my spine did i hit the coon spv Okay, and uh oh. Can I get it? Oh, yeah. Awesome. So, I still don't think we have the cows full on mixed ration, though. Um, we might have to start off and cut some more grass in the next episode. Um, because I would actually like to have uh, an extra tractor. Let's see, where are we at? Where are we at? Gosh, we still have that much corn left, huh? Um, whoops. Okay, he's coming up. Wow, we still have canola or silage left this guy's going up okay, he's filling up so we'll follow him down but I think it's pretty much going to be time to end the episode uh, we'll follow him down and uh, we'll do the final sale and then I'll just do the rest of the sailing off off screen and we come back in the next episode though uh, we will have all the money uh, from the uh, the sale of all of our corn. And actually, it's going to be this truck right here. We'll just jump in this one. We will jump in this one. Give me your corn. Put your corn in me. That's kind of creepy. All right. I'm just going to manually drive this one down because it's YOLO. You only live once. 
See, he's going to go up there. Oh, my gosh. Well, you know what, guys? I think we're going to be planting some corn. <laughs> we're going to have to harvest some corn next episode. Or, the, you know, next time we do some planting. Because um, we just have to do it. <gasps> oh my gosh. Farm silo is empty. Hey, bro. See you later. I think maybe I came down that hill way too slow because I'm doing this perfectly and staying in the lines the whole way down. Not. <laughs> All right. Actually, what I'm going to do... I'm just going to have him drive the course, and then... Um, we're going to pick this guy up. Watch out, dude! And then this will be all the corn for... For this episode, we'll be able to send off the... Um, uh, train and um, I'm, I'll have uh, my silage guy finish off doing uh, the, you know doing the silage. So um, let's see nearest waypoint. Let's go ahead and have him just drive the the rest of the way. Oh gosh. Okay. Well, we're definitely going to be over 600,000. We're almost over it right there. Um, we will send the Okay, we're going to we're going to do a race. We're going to see if I can get over I'm going to run over to the uh biogas plant. I'm going to see if I can get over there before uh, our, our money hits. I don't think I'm going to be able to make it, though. I might be able to get to the Field 41, though. Maybe. There's a camper up there. I wonder if anything's in it. I've always wanted a little camper like that, but... Not really one like that, but like one that you can actually drive, you know, that has the vehicle. Kind of like a van, but with a bigger back on it. Oh, oh, 110,000. So we got up to 700,000. Um, not as much as I was thinking that we would get up to, but I'm still pretty happy. I can't really complain too much. So um, I will let you guys go for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. As always, please don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. It helps me out tremendously. Um, don't forget to comment, share, and please subscribe for this and many more videos. This has been Farming Simulator 15, and I am Brad M 73 We will see you guys next time. Bye for now.